Here it comes again. That sudden sensation of fear, overwhelming fear, burrowing its way underneath my brain, <laughs> making itself at home. You think this is gonna get rid of me? This control you think you have? Nesting, screaming in my mind. It's an illusion. We are in a war, and we are on the losing side of it. Whatever you're doing, I don't trust it. You want me to tell you that I see my dead father, that I talk, that I'm losing my mind, that I don't, that that I don't know how to control this thing, I don't know how to stop it. Fuck! <laughs> I acknowledge it. Awesome, great. Ironically enough, we never looked at the show as episodic. Season two is sort of the, the second act of this one story that we're telling. As Elliot has sort of gone inward, we start kind of expand our universe and start to develop everyone else's character and fill out the world. The season it divulges into so many different character stories. Everyone just has a completely different arc this season. It's a much darker season. People are sort of dealing with the fallout of the 5-9 hack, and in doing that, they're sort of dealing with their own internal loneliness and isolation. I have value. And even though you don't see it, they do. They are barbarians in $10,000 suits. And so in Angela's case, she's zoning out and kind of being a corporate zombie. She alienates her dad. She alienates Darlene and Elliot. She's going into the belly of the beast. She becomes more manipulative this season. And I think that it's a weird coping mechanism for her to be able to survive and do the things that she's doing at this corporation that are pretty traumatizing. You're panicking right now. But the minute you remove emotion from this, you'll do just fine. Everyone is alone in a completely different way. Darlene kind of destroyed the world, and it was what she wanted to do, and she pulled it off. But battling with the aftermath, all the consequences, like it can become a really isolating situation to be in. Darlene's reaction to it is to lash out. You know, we first see her, she's having a panic attack alone in the bathroom, and then she walks out and she's a totally different person, and she puts on a face and she puts on this tough exterior. We have been on our knees for too long. And it's time to stand up. So in a lot of ways, a lot of these characters are pretending to be things that they're not. Everybody sort of has this mask, hiding their loneliness or masking it. And control is about putting on that front. But ultimately, it will end up being an illusion. Control is about as real as a one-legged unicorn taking a leak at the end of a double rainbow. Then what do we have? I know we tackle a lot of themes about the way technology has influenced the way we interact with each other. But really, I always say the show isn't about the hacking, it's about the people behind the hacking. And so at the end of the day, that's something that can always be sort of universal and relatable. Sam's created such a vast dynamic story with real characters going through some dangerous situations in their life. And the thing people will really take from this is just watching that struggle and seeing people at the end of their rope still persevere and continue to fight even though their back's against the wall. Mm -hmm.